to ask when you are talking about grades um, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our department's philosophy of uh, technology. Uh, so first I would be remiss to follow math without introducing some numbers. Anyone know what this number represents? Any guess? Minutes in a day. Nice job. Okay so this represents the amount of minutes in each day and um, before we go any further, before we talk about how to use your data planner, we have to talk about our approach to thinking about our day. Um, we live in a culture where we feel like we don't have enough time. We don't feel like we have enough money, food, sleep. Raise your hand if you have felt this at some point this last week. Yes, okay? So I'm a new mom, Mr. Griesbach is a new dad. Uh, we definitely feel this, okay? And it's, it's very easy to wake up every morning and Oh my gosh, I don't have enough time. Um, I don't. I didn't get enough sleep, and that can really that shifts your mindset. That shifts how you attack your day. Um, and so I want to move away from this concept of not having enough. Um, and you have to start out um, at believing that you have enough time in each day. Um, and so as parents, this is where you really come in and help them, help your child understand that they have enough time for the things that are important to them. So like I said, I'm a new mom, and so obviously spending time with my son is of a huge value. And I remember last year talking to Mrs. Alberts, one of our English teachers, and I'm thinking, how do you have enough time to do all the grading and the curriculum planning and be a good mom? How does that work? I'm, I'm sure you guys have felt the same way. And she said, you just figure it out. And it, it just, you do. And you just figure out, it, it's a, you've, I'm passionate about teaching and I'm passionate about loving my son. When you have your priorities straight, you figure out how to manage your day. And so that's what I want to talk to you students about. Um, so first, I, I need you guys to not buy into scarcity, this, this belief that we don't have enough. We do have enough time. We are a very privileged group of individuals. Um, even if we have things that we struggle with, um, we have a lot that we offer here at Sage Craig. It's an honor to be a teacher at a school that supports such whole child development um, with the things that the PTSA puts on and what our counselors do. And, um, so I want you first to believe that you have enough time to actually use your agenda and get your homework done. Because I know students, that's why you're here. You're like, okay, give me something really practical so I can make this happen. Um, so here are three questions that I want students to ask and parents to encourage. So uh, this is the stage of life where parents have to learn to balance letting their child figure things out, but still being the parent because that's why you're there. Um, and so I'm gonna pose these questions to students Parents, you follow up with your child if they're asking these questions. So um, the first question is, where are you doing your homework? When are you doing your homework? And how are you doing your homework? So first, when you do your homework matters. I encourage you, I challenge you to be the boss of your smartphone. It does way more than, uh, than Snapchat and Instagram, okay? I know those are your most frequently used apps, but it, uh, I think your most frequently used app should be your calendar app. Any, anyone, their most frequently used app is their calendar app? Okay, addicted to the calendar app, okay? That's a good practice, okay? Um, but, so there's one, one strategy is, you know, adding the assignments into your calendar, adding test dates onto your calendar, but use the alarm, the basic alarm system to remind you to, oh, I need to study for this quiz, or oh, I need to make sure I do this, and this is where the daily planner will come in handy. If you are going home and you need a little break after school, I get that, you just have to, sometimes you just need to decompress. Set an alarm for how long you can decompress. Because if you decompress on your phone, which is fine, sometimes you get lost. And all of a sudden, 45 minutes, an hour, and I hear like people play video games for hours, one hours. Set alarms so that you remind yourself, that you sort of wake yourself up out of that coma, okay? You need to do that yourself. And this shouldn't be your mom setting the alarm for you, this should be you setting the alarm, okay? All right, um, when you do your homework matters. So um, I ask my students, I, um, I'm a big daily planner person, um, and this is not because I'm um, organized by nature. This, these are things that have come to me over the years as I've tried to figure out how to manage. I've become very type A organized being a teacher, um, and 
So daily planners are one of the things that I'm addicted to. So yes, I have my Google Calendar that I um, have filled out, but I also write things down on my daily planners. So I ask my students if I could take a picture of some of their daily planners and they um, acquiesced. And so I wanted to show you a couple of them. They are filled out um, and they look beautiful. They make me so happy. Raise your hand if your daily planner looks like this. Anyone? Nice. nice. Okay, so here's, if your daily planner does not, because I know that for some people, your daily planner is only filled out for the classes where the teacher says, take your daily planner and write this in, because I'm going to walk around and check it, okay? Um, it's okay if you're not the type A organized person that you seem to probably assume that I am at this point, um, but you can still play the daily planner game, okay? So here's the game. So yes, you every day, every class, you fill out what's, um, what your homework is, okay? But the game is when you cross it off, okay? Mm -hmm. And it is the most rewarding feeling when you cross things off, okay? Now let's say you um, have to study for a math test, okay? Uh, I'm sure that it's not just study, okay? If you just write study for math test, it's not very rewarding. What you should do is uh, complete front side of study guide, okay? And when you complete front side of study guide, you cross that off. And then you reward yourself. You go get a piece of chocolate. You go like shoot hoops. Whatever it is you need to do, you reward yourself after you cross them off. Okay? And then you come back and do the other side of the study guide and you get it done. Okay? So play the daily planner game with your style, but find what I'm what I'm getting at is use it and then reward yourself for using it. There's something powerful about writing things down, accomplishing them, and then getting a little bit of a breather. Okay? I think that's going to help your um, a mental energy as you're going through. And here's another one that I wanted to show. She has her away game. Um, she has all sorts of little different notes um, on the side. Um, there's another one called a little quote. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is how you do your homework. So I just talked about you know obsessing over uh, using your calendar app, and yes, I believe in that. However, when you're doing your geometry homework or you're reading House on Mango Street. You need to put your phone in the fridge. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I don't mean that literally, but after you've set your alarms and figured out, okay, how long this should take or whatnot, you go put it in the other room. Not sitting next to you, not face down. Face down is, doesn't really work. We all do that as though it's, we're going to ignore it. We're not. Just flip it over, look at it. Okay. Put it in the other room. And then you're focused. There's something that happens when you don't know where your phone is, okay, or when it's in the other room. So I, I mean this. I mean, don't put it in the fridge. It's going to break a really expensive device. But find a location where you put your phone. Um, and how you do your homework matters. So uh, you need to pace your day like you pace a race. So you need to kind of set the priorities. Okay, where does my mo where does my energy need to go the most when I'm running the hill on my uh, 10 mile run? I need the most energy there. When I'm doing my geometry homework, or when I'm reading Lore of the Flies, I need my more, I need the energy. Okay, I'm going to just use my class as an example. I'm really excited to see some of my students here. Um, the other day, my students were having a hard time with the reading quizzes, and I said, "Okay, well, tell me how you're reading um, Lore of the Flies." Oh, at 11 o'clock before I go to bed after I've done all my other homework. I'm like, okay, well, there's your answer. Lore of the Flies is a great book, and I know everyone and our mom has read it, but it's a hard book. It's got a lot of imagery, and it, it, uh, Golden kind of gets stuck in sometimes, and you're like, wait, what is going on? He's talking to a pig's head. I'm confused. Okay, it's not a book you can read uh, leisurely. And so we had a conversation of how you change your mindset when you're reading that. So I said, okay, instead, read uh, all the way through once, um, right when you get home from school, and then read it more closely in between math and AP US or AP Euro. Um, so what I'm getting at is, Pick what, what class is going to be most challenging for you. And say, okay, that's going to, be, that's going to require my, uh, uh, the, the most amount of energy. So <coughs> pick a time when you're going to have that energy to accomplish that task. Because um, if you sit in it too long, it'll just take over and it'll be really hard to accomplish. Um, and I just want to say, this: all these things that I'm talking about build this character called grit. Does anyone know what grit is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Stick-to-itiveness. Grit is the characteristic um, that you gain from uh, following through on these tasks and following through on hard classes and busy schedules. And this is the secret. This is, grit is what employers want. And I read a book 
um, I highly encourage everyone to read called How Children Succeed by Paul Tuff. Has anyone read that book? It is a great book. And in the book he says, the best indicator of how a high school student will do in life in general is not their SAT score, but their GPA. Because their GPA indicates that work ethic and how they balance each, uh, a myriad of challenges. And then one next thing I need to say, I, it is not okay to sacrifice sleep for good grades, okay? And I, I had this show with my students last year, and I'm just gonna tell you this. I remember last year, I think DK was in this class, I heard st students saying, oh, I was up till midnight doing homework, and it, it was sort of this badge of honor, how late they were staying up doing homework. And I just, I, I, am, I am a sleep person. You need to go to bed at a certain time. And um, I said, okay, who here has a bedtime that they commit to and they follow through on? Three kids raised their hand. DK was one of them. Um, and let me tell you, the students who raise their hand are the students who have the highest grade in my class, who are involved in sports and ASB, and on top of that, have the, have the, um, have the best mental health. They were the most... Uh, they were the least grouchy. They were the least stressed. Okay, I'm serious. It was it was shocking, uh, but then again, not because they had that that sleep component, which is something you cannot fabricate. It's not something you can get that for. It's not something you can play a game for. It's something you just have to commit to. Uh, so I'm not crazy, um, but make a plan and include um, a bedtime. I I, I I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, and stick to it. You'll eliminate or at least curb stress and grouchiness. Um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about are grades, zeros, and the right questions. So yes, grades matter freshman year. And no, you cannot miss assignments on a trimester system and expect an A. I mean, there's some wiggle room there, but you do have to be super on top of things. But zeros, or clearing zeros are, is not key. Okay, that's not the, the end goal. The end goal is not to clear and get rid of your zeros. In fact, that's something that we're trying to work on as an English department. Um, and so what I want to encourage you to do is instead, um, ask the right question. So you say, what category is my weakest? When you look at school, you focus and you hone in on that zero. But what I want you to do is instead look at the progress report, where you can see each category, how they're performing. And then figure out questions um, to ask based on that class. So what I want you to write now. I don't know where I'm at in time, but I'm going to use my time to have you talk to, so students, maybe talk to your a parent or a friend nearby. I want you to think about what class is your hardest class. I want you to think about what question you can either ask yourself or your teacher about how you can improve. Okay? So you're going to think about your hardest class and come up with a good question to ask about how you can improve in that class. Ready? Go. Like class or Spanish teacher? Uh -huh. uh, how can I study? Like, what are some good ways to study? Great. What are some ways I can study for Spanish? Because every department or every discipline is a little bit different. DK kind of said the same question. Okay, so for trigonometry, if, I, if I'm studying my notes, but that's not helping me, what's something else I can do besides study notes? Those are great questions to ask. They're very practical. Um, and then finally, I just want to um, finish by talking about our English department's philosophy of um, technology. And I, this was kind of hard for me because um, you know, it used, the conversation used to be, how are you going to integrate technology? And that sort of, um, it, it's, it's a moot point at this point. Um, uh, our curriculum is precluded by the technology that we have. It's a part of what we do. Um, um, we want to train your uh, child, we want to train you how to be, uh, be professional and how you communicate. And this is why we're on the Chromebooks, because we want you to learn how to craft an email, learn how to collaborate with a partner on a Google Slides, you know how to con back and forth. Um, and all of this is because at the end, we want you to be the creative individuals that develop the devices. That